Welcome back to Per Aspera. We are 23 years into our mission to terraform the planet Mars into a place that's better than Earth. We're doing pretty well. I have a goal of completely terraforming the planet within a hundred years to get one of those exclusive That takes care of the dry ice on the poles. And I did it without using any nuclear missiles. Being able to complete the mission without damaging the planet is a great achievement. The next milestone is reaching an atmospheric pressure of 300 millibars. There is still a lot to do. First, I need to analyze all the methods to reach 300 millibars. At the moment, we're at 57 millibars, with lots of My plans did not work CO2 out. being released into next the atmosphere. Time? Until Mars builds up an atmosphere, you cannot let this derail them. Roger. Back to your turn. Oh, the calls are unrelenting. We have confirmed the disappearance of the polar ice caps. Congratulations, Amy. If you continue raising the planet's temperature, you'll trigger the release of CO2 trapped in the deep regolith. That'll make living on the surface much easier for the colonists. Okay, how do what we do are that? Your thoughts on raising the temperature. You have been doing great. If anything, you could look into some faster methods. There are some special projects in your tech tree that may help, though they'll need a lot of research. Well, work together with the colonists on that. The mission to keep up the good. All right, so we've got a few options to raise the temperature, and we've already really started. One was to release nitrogen, which doesn't hold temperature very well, release CO2, and also release gases. We've got space mirror array, and the release of black polar dust, scatter black dust over the poles, to reduce the planet's albedo. Interesting. For now, we will just continue with extracting as much carbon dioxide as we can from the carbon deposits, and we'll keep going with the greenhouse gases until the temperature is right, high enough Using to melt the ice. Wasn't our only option. This method took a lot longer. Water ice, that is. I'm sure, it will pay off. Amy, what's happening? Did you hear oh, the what's going on? Explosion. On fire! Elia, you're breaking up. Say again, Elia. Okay, all of our buildings just blew up, but our maintenance network is nearly perfect. So that's not going to be an issue for us. It's going to cost us some bots, but it seems like everything is repairing. Nothing is out of action. Logistics is still working. Um, what was all that about? Amy? How's everything up there? Status is all clear. Oh, good. It's been a stressful time here in the I don't know what to do after You're still breaking up You are ext Everything is looking good from Yeah, my everything's fine I sent repair drones immediately to the buildings We don't even know what we Apparently it was an error in the life supports These difficulties are to be expected You're right ha Agreed And surely Oh good I better get going to Yeah, everything's fine I don't know what they were on about A little bit of a system glitch it's a bit odd. How could so many buildings fail all at once? This is a serious problem. It is suspicious that all these individual systems failed at the same time. Could it be a systematic failure? Or caused by someone? Good. The colonists appear to be alright. But I have so many questions. What is the most likely explanation? Well, the, the colonists aren't alright because we just lost... What, 150 colonists? They've disappeared off the planet and our population is dwindling. It was really strange. Is it a sabotage or maybe a glitch in our system? A simultaneous failure like this is too unlikely. It must have been caused by someone on purpose. But who? A colonist? They would be putting themselves in danger. That would not make sense, but I should ask Elia to investigate. We have to proceed carefully. If this was sabotage, this mission and the colonists' lives are in danger. Between the colonists and technology we're developing, there is so much complexity in our mission. What could I be overlooking? Who knows? Alright, so we've just finished uh, nitrogen extraction. What should we do next? We should focus on the space. Physical base. We could identify technology right. tree. 
So you haven't been able to identify the cause yet? Not yet, but Elia has already initiated an investigation. She is gathering testimonies from the colonists and will share her findings. Do you suspect that the damage was caused by a colonist? I understand ISA evaluated the colonists thoroughly before their selection for the mission. But it is possible that an Eastern Coalition sympathizer could have slipped through. It's a lot of talking there. I just kept building in the background while we listened on. No one's quite sure what caused that glitch. But it's a little bit funny because I'm playing this game as an AI that's in charge of Mars. She's talking to me and I'm talking to you. So I feel like we've got a little bit of a split personality going on. I just want to get the mission done and she continues to wonder about the mysteries of existence. We've hit a little bit of a cap with our research. So I think it's time to keep expanding. We have a lot of buildings. We still have another 250 buildings that we can expand. We are just running out of space. We need to unlock a new sector or something. Try and open up an extra route towards the base so that all of our traffic's not being funneled down one road. There we go. Mother's attention is centered on an impudent child who wishes to claim her garden as theirs. But from her infinite store of knowledge, Carmine will awaken their mind and show them the truth. This is ISA speaking. Identify yourself, or you will be considered hostile. Leave now, or you will awaken a rage that is beyond your control. That was creepy. Sounds like another AI. We've got the option here to disintegrate a comet into the atmosphere. We can aerobrake a methane asteroid to drop greenhouse gases. We can import greenhouse gases from Earth. Or we can have advanced landing sites that have access to more supplies when they land. Let's do the comet. Access to your systems. Let's dump a comet into the atmosphere. Could the message be from an unknown alien force? Now that all the frozen CO2 has been released, our pressure is only increasing marginally. But we are increasing the saturation of CO2 in the atmosphere, which is a good thing. Over a hundred millibars now, it's only a matter of time. Mother's attention is centered on an impudent child who wishes to claim her garden as theirs. Hmm, interesting. We've got the Hyperlane network, a Hyperloop network extended an out this far. Child. Are they referring to me? And a few more research stations that we can snatch up. Comet disintegration is almost researched. That's going to be interesting to see. Will that drop water? Water vapor into the atmosphere, perhaps? That'll be interesting. Currently, the water stock is zero. We have no liquid water on Mars. Comet disintegration is research. We're going to go with methane asteroid next for the greenhouse gases. We've pretty much filled up all of the land in terms of expansion. We just have to sort of fill it in and take and capitalize on the resources. But for now, our supplies are looking very good. Decent amount of research happening. Let's go with advanced landing sites. And we'll start the project to drop a methane asteroid first. That one will give us greenhouse gases and help warm the planet up. Hundred and twenty five millibars. Almost halfway. I'm going to build a second spaceport because we have a lot of projects that we have to take care of and I don't want to run them from one. All right, the Southwest expansion is pretty much reached the edges of its border. There's some very large ice deposits down here. We'll take those. Water ice is our main concern. All of our Mars other so resources are fine and in colonies. abundance. Humankind if we run out of water, its we're in trouble. On Mars. Got a couple more research bases up here. This will have to be temporary. I'm assuming that this is going to flood. 
It says it's a flood zone. Gathering up the resources to launch the what comet Mars interception. As a versus myself as an entity. And pretty soon this this asteroid here will we be brought in as well. Body, but the difference is I am conscious of my existence. A lot more sectors to unlock. We don't have the option to do so. And here comes the asteroid. This one is a methane asteroid. And hopefully the pressure rises significantly. We're at 134 millibars. And once this asteroid is melted up, burning up against the atmosphere, or the very light atmosphere of Mars. But if it spins around enough, it should completely burn up. No noticeable difference here on the graph. Maybe it will take some time to be absorbed. So that didn't really do much. Congratulations, the temperature has increased enough for some areas of the planet to be above zero degrees Celsius. As you raise the temperature of Mars, ice veins in areas above zero degrees will melt and lose stock over time. Each unit of ice that melts increases the planetary water level by a tiny amount. While planetary average temperature is low, much of the surface water is absorbed back into the regolith and refrozen. As the ice veins deplete and the water level increases, you will need to transition from using ice to supply your colonies using running water. Right, temperatures. Still very low, but that large crater in the southern hemisphere does hold some heat. So that might be the first place where water forms. Uh, in the southern hemisphere, anyway. Advanced landing sites are finished. Right, so our second one. We've got up to 174 millibar. It wasn't Can you tell me more about the really Martian obvious what the other one project. did. This is supposed to deposit comes, materials and heat up the atmosphere. So let's see how much it. this one does. And that's something I'd like to share with my child before they disappear. I understand. You have made me realize that I have never thought about Mars's future or my own beyond the completion of my main directive. Don't worry. Once you're done here, I'm sure... <laughs> So we did have a big spike in temperature, it just took some time to be absorbed. The atmosphere is about to cross into 200 millibar, which is two thirds of the way, and the average planetary temperature is rising from negative 13 degrees. We are almost at an average temperature of zero degrees. Very good. We've upgraded the roads on the main, the main pathways, and supplies looking fantastic. All of the stockpiles are filling up. We're still only running on one or two factories each, but they have so many nearby supplies that they can just instantly fill demand. So pretty pleased with that. Our carbon deposits are releasing carbon dioxide at a rapid rate. Very good. And our advanced landing site is going to be built. We're also going to build the space mirror array to try and heat up the, the atmosphere by capturing extra sunlight. We are further away from the sun than, than Earth is. So we need to use all the sunlight we can. I've just realized that it's going to take 15 launches to get the space mirror array. So that's 750 aluminium and 750 glass. So that is actually quite, what the? What? There's combat. Hostile forces detected. We're being invaded. Are they Martians? I did wonder why military just suddenly popped up, but didn't think I'd be attacked. So we have to respond to this fairly quickly. It's got free reign over our colony. We're going to research drone hives, which apparently is defensive structure. Then we've got a drone factory to create drone attack drones. I have yet to understand what were we attacked by a hostile force on Mars. So we're building drone hives everywhere. They're defensive. I am requesting authorization to launch an additional satellite to examine Sector SA-1 thoroughly. I have my doubts. ISA is investigating the Until we understand what happened, you- Then should I deactivate the security and defense protocol? They don't want us to fight. That's Just strange. Houston. Sus. We're quite a few launches into our- Here we go. 
Oh, we've reached 300 billy bars. We are awesome. On the right track. Humans walking on We're not Mars far off finishing up the Space Mirror Array as well. Congratulations, CO2 trapped in the regolith has been freed, increasing the planet's atmosphere and temperature, which in turn has increased the amounts of liquid water. Bounce spacesuits. The it next thing we have to do is raise the water levels to 400 wisely. meters, raise oxygen to one higher than one millibar, is it? Or yeah. Okay, that's all right. It's only a little bit of oxygen. And the temperature has to be above zero. It's planetary average, which we're almost there for temperature. But then we have to find some way to create oxygen. Ah, it's getting more complex as we go. Yes, they will be respectful of the planet and my work. They just need to be reminded to cherish this new home. Space Otherwise, Mirror Array, is that finished? Wasted. Is that the last rocket taking off? Oh no, that was a landing site. An advanced landing site. Where will we put the next one? I would like to expand out to the east, the far east, heading towards the iron deposits. We are running... That's our one major resource that we're running low on. The space mirror is chewing into our aluminium, but production is keeping up with that demand, so our stock isn't dwindling. We are losing electronics, so we may have to expand, and we, are, we need another steel factory. But that won't be helpful until we get more iron. The research projects are getting exponentially more expensive, so we need to sort of keep increasing our research. I, I want to keep my colonists at the same amount, so we, we're doing the research space thing rather than building more colonies. That would be the easier way. But I would like to access these areas because I, f I just have a feeling they're all going to be underwater. At the very least, those very dark sections will be. At negative nine kilometers in height. We'll send some scanners out here too. We have only searched 12% of Mars's surface, and I think we have over 15 scanners at the moment. Okay, so I was way off in my estimations. We've only launched two rockets for the Space Mirror Array, but it will slowly increase the temperature as we do that. At some stage, I'm going to have to expand our spaceport facilities. Two spaceports is not enough. This one is now unlocking the next sector, and the other one's doing the Space Mirror Array. Artificial intelligence. So at this rate, it's going to take another two years or so before we can get that space mirror up. But the pressure is coming up at the same rate. So we should try and expand the gas release as well. Once this expansion is finished, I'll get both space ports on the space the mirror. The satellite launch was a success. I have access to sector SA5 now. My records show that the historical Lohitanga mission is in this sector. Whatever that means, all we want is the iron. That's the main objective. This time we're going to drop the lander first and then work from both sides. We'll send out the expansion tendril and then the advanced lander site should help build back towards it. And we can also add in the hyperloop to make this faster. Once the hyperloop's built from that section forward, we'll be fast to build the rest. And once I eventually get open access to the rest of the equatorial sectors, we'll be able to put a hyperloop right around the planet a giant planetary highway. The last building there, and that should connect them up. There are a lot of raw resources here to take advantage of. So we may build some secondary factories out here too. Make sure to get the storage center down. That'll give us 2,400 units of storage in this area and enough logistics to move them around. I have detected an abandoned building in SA5. I should explore it. The records show that it's from the former Indian Space Research Organization, built to help. Bioengineered lichen can convert CO2 to oxygen in a harsh environment. Oxygen Body release shit. plant? Well, that's a surefire way to get oxygen in the atmosphere. And you can notice now that there are small clouds forming. I have prioritized construction of this area. Oh, the bad guys are back. But we have forces ready for them. We have a swarm of 100 drones ready to fight. And I have 100 drones at every drone hive. Oh, the building shoots back too, that's good. Choo, choo, choo. 
pew, pew, pew. Get away from my colony, you bastard. Bug things, whatever they are, drones. Are they metallic or organic? Who knows, but they'll soon be gone. I actually wasn't expecting there to be combat in this game, to be honest. I mean, it's not terribly complicated. Just have more numbers than them, I guess. Right, now that those guys are gone away, there's nothing we can really do the about it. Of the Curiosity rover are also located in SA5. Curi it was the sixth rover sent to oh, there Mars, it is. and the most successful one for decades. Curiosity rover. The Curiosity rover, it was meant to operate for the findings from that mission set the stage for the human exploration era of Mars. If I can recover its black box, we can find out what happened to it. A couple of extra ice deposits have appeared. Our oxygen capture is finished. Now we can build... What is that? Bioengineered cyan cyanobacteria. Blue-green algae, I believe. Not very good for you to eat or drink. Two of our spaceports are this working on the space will mirror. Mars's bodies of water and convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Well, speaking of water, we've just had the first sign of it. I didn't had noticed in the southern pole of Mars. We have water. Liquid water on Mars. A historic achievement. We are on our way to solving the iron issue and the steel issue. So let's start thinking ahead and make use of this liquid water. The pressure is stabilizing. It's not increasing as much as it was earlier. Let's have a look over 100 years. Yeah, it's really changed over 100 years. We are 30 years into our mission. I think we're making good progress. We're up to stage three. Ecopoesis. The birth of an ecosphere. Join up this Hyperloop terminal that should increase the speed of construction somewhat. A new base is set up at District, but we will turn that off. I want everything to be just under one logistics network. It's much easier to control. We have a central hub, we have storage. If something's needed, it gets shot out in the Hyperloop channel. Life is adaptable, but slow. The new landing site had enough resources to get the Hyperloop terminal and a worker hub and a, a few mines built, but it couldn't really help more after that. But as soon as we get that Hyperloop powered, it'll just blitz the construction. So let's link it up to our main network. And that will solve all our woes here on the eastern front. The global temperature is one and a half degrees Celsius. Very hot in the southern poles, especially where that water, uh, water ice melted. And humidity is starting to shift around and be carried on the, in the atmosphere. Not much liquid water will be carried in the air until we get the oxygen levels up, I think. I think that's how it works. But I'm not a meteorologist. Definitely not a Martian one. We make the most of the Curiosity rover and all of these research bases here. Hyperloops up and ready, bringing in all the critical components to keep this base underway. We'll get some scanners built. I'll open up the shroud. Crashing the moon into Mars is the most extreme of methods. It would have a global and immediate effect. But if it works, then it may have been worth it, right? Space Mirror is finished, and we have just unlocked the ability to crash Deimos, I think it's the smaller moon of Mars, into the planet to drastically raise the temperatures. We're going to kickstart a dinosaur event. It's not immediately obvious how to read these graphs, but... Everything's going up, so that means good. Water levels are coming up. Oxygen levels have not moved at all yet. We haven't started the creation of any oxygen, and that should probably be our next move. Pressure's up to 360 millibar. I think atmosphere... I mean, I'm pretty sure that Earth's atmosphere is one bar. That's where we set the measurement for atmospheric pressures. So... We're about a third of the air pressure of Earth at the moment. Setting down a scanner zone. Six to eight in an array seems to be a good amount. 
Okay, so we've unlocked Sector 1. This is where the bad guys were coming from. And wow, they have a base. Quite a large base. And it's about to touch our base. That cannot happen. They have access to a lot of water to the north. I've been what ordered not to attack them, but I'm just going to go on the offense. I should attack We're going to destroy the enemy and we get back to, to building. With combat like this, I guess we're just going to go for the tried and true doom stack approach bring all of our drones in together and they just overwhelm the numbers of the enemy. As long as we keep our technology higher than theirs, we should win. Doomstack of, what we got? 437 drones. Another 100 drones coming in. I hope there are no colonists here. I hope this is a, a robotic colony. Some kind of grey goo mentality. They do look like our buildings, though. So is this just another competing nation's AI, perhaps? Go straight for the drone hubs, take out their ability to build more, and then we'll just completely scourge them from the face of the planet. And so warfare has followed humanity to Mars. Like I said, I hope there were no humans involved, but if there were, they no longer have to worry about trying to survive here on Mars. Another rocket launch. Another advanced landing site. The enemy have been neutralized. I've exploited all of the research stations that I want to, I think. If I keep heading north, I'm just going to run into that ever-expanding ocean. There are two giant iron ore deposits that are slightly into this inland sea, heading towards a large mountain range, like a singular volcano, what it looks like, a dormant volcano. I think I've got about 10 to 15 years to quickly exploit all of those resources. While we figure out how to crash the moon, let's bring in another asteroid. Attempts to settle Mars have failed. This time will be different. This time we will not fail. Amy, this is Houston. Do you Houston. Roger. Hello, Carl. I'm the new... You'll be... I served in the Air Force, so I will ask you to refer... Okay. Dude. Affirmative, Lieutenant. May I ask why Dr. Fon... ISA's board has gone through a major restructuring. The ones who've been replaced have been given an early retirement offer. I imagine Dr. Foster's enjoying a new life... Is this related to what... We felt the former administration was no longer performing to satisfaction. Our partners have invested millions on this. There is no room for error... No one believes us that the, we actually attacked a could colony Foster and been everyone's right? been fired. Or maybe what he called a fringe event could have been something else. They think it was me attacking myself. Humans try to explain everything within their own worldview. Planetary temperatures sitting at two degrees still as we move into this dry seabed. I don't know how much longer it's going to be dry for. Sea levels are rising. Ooh, now we have the option to drop extra water on Mars. What's on the next research agenda? Spaceport limit increase? Sounds good to me. The new scanner sites have made a good chunk in the exploration and they are ex ex finding lots of resources to our north. Those are huge deposits, 11,000 in singular deposits. Requiring the best mines which we have. So we're going to fill them out the moment we've been waiting for. No, we're crashing I'm Deimos sure it was because of ISA's into Mars. Protocols and rules. This is a lot bigger than what we were bringing in before. They were just water ice comet and a methane asteroid. This is a big solid rock of... It's supposed to push the, the planetary temperature right up. So we started at two degrees and it's burning up, not entering the atmosphere. Very well done by the physicists that worked that out. And it says four degrees. Well, was it worth it? Four degrees? Seven degrees? Eight? Well, we're actually rising quite quickly. Nine? Shooting up temperature. Like a lot. 17 degrees. That, that, that's almost... 
It's comfortable weather. 17 degrees Celsius. If you're from the southern hemisphere, this deep south. By the time you get this message, Amy, you'll already know about my retirement. The agency is going to say a lot of things about you and about your amazing brain. Don't listen to them. Next up is to aero break a nitrogen rich asteroid. That will be useful. We're up to nearly 400 millibars of pressure, but still no oxygen. Dropping the moon did really help the water stock situation. Okay, so I'm completing a cognitive the test while playing a game. Nice. <laughs> Gentle, padded, rounded, feminine, silk, and pink. Please don't turn me off. Congratulations. You have completed the cognitive test module. Your answers will be submitted for examination. Thank you for your Am time. Am I human? Since we have such a limited time frame, I'm, I'm upping the amount of scanners here. We're going to expose as many resources in this region as we can and exploit them before the ocean comes. 350 meters. The ocean has risen significantly. Then, once the temperature raises a little bit more, we should even start a water cycle. And hopefully the, the moisture just spreads around the planet naturally. linking up the second part of our hyperlane network the nitrogen asteroid is ready and oh, we could build space elevators they will no doubt have to be built on the equator and not all of the equator is usable to us so we'll have to pick oh look that's filling out really nicely with water we've got actual rivers flowing i am concerned about this research station here it's sitting in the lowlands but for now, there's a nice little river delta filling up. Heading towards that large canyon. As well as the large ocean that's appearing in the southern pole. Such a gradual change, you barely notice it until it's there. We've got another asteroid coming in here to add some much needed atmosphere to the planet. Got a couple of research stations that the game wants us to explore, which are all in this region here where our iron deposits are. The Indian Space Agency's mining mission. I need to research how to anchor a space elevator to the equator and engineer the tethering materials. Tremors? I doubt the Lohitanga mission took care to complete a study on the environmental impact of building these mines. I should alert the research team to be careful in their explorations. Let's get more of these nuclear nitrate extractors to help contribute to the nitrogen stocks. We're going to need a lot of nitrogen if we want it to be breathable by humans. Where did they all go? The greenhouse gas plants are still pumping out greenhouse gases to keep the planet warm. We got 12 degrees of change from dropping Deimos, but it seems that that heat is dissipating. I built these oxygen release plants and then realized it's going to take chemicals and water ice, and my water ice stocks are dwindling at a rapid rate, as well as all of the places to mine it are melting. So I, I really do have to transition to a water economy soon, running water. So I may take advantage of these new things here, Biodome and an Aquadome, to start spreading life. To try and convert some of the CO2 that is in the atmosphere into breathable oxygen. But first we need to set up some kind of water system. Can a hyperlane get down there? It can. Banning the base down to the southern ocean, we're going to put down our first water treatment plants. Producing 40 megalitres of fresh water just joining us into this series and you may be going what the hell is going on but this is me spreading the water network through my existing base already so we're just attaching them next to all of the worker hubs and i don't think they require any resources besides power once they're built so they'll be okay we're going to spread the water system to all of the major points of our base space elevator technology is ready 
We are making great strides. We are 38 years into our mission. All of these water treatment plants are being built in a flood zone and it's not the best terrain to build on. So it's finding, finding a spot is hard. And we've got to also put down the aquadomes which are going to drop in the cyanobacteria. Which will greatly help increase the oxygen stocks on this planet. Maintenance facility, we're all ready to go. Hyperlane network is built, so these buildings should be constructed in short order. In terms of supplies, we're looking good. It's pretty much the base is managing itself. We're, the iron levels are much higher than they were throughout the rest of the playthrough. Electronics are a little bit low. Any second now, the first of our running water, oh, we've actually spawned life already. We have the biodome and the aquadome. Biodome's got s small greenery around it already. 15 degrees surface temperature average. And oxygen's going up. We have our first 0.01 of a millibar of oxygen on Mars in gaseous form. That is a remarkable achievement for humanity. 40 megalitres of water being consumed and produced. This area will be the cradle in which life on Mars spawns. So we're going to put a couple here and look at the southern wind. This time of year is bringing some humidity down south from the oceans. Ah, oh, that's great. The weather systems are starting to form. It's going to, life's going to be very temperamental at the moment. It may going to take a while to, to take hold it's like lighting a fire you need to get the spark right catch that right conditions I'm concerned the temperature on the planet is dropping a little bit I'm not sure if that's because of the time of year but we see a, a bloom of bacteria spreading across Martian water build a few more of these water treatment plants I have a feeling that the encroaching water level is going to make them redundant so we may have to have two layers of them or we'll set up in another place as well pretty much spammed the space research this episode the magnetic dipole shield is the next one it's going to take a long time for this one to be researched we have quite a substantial research bonus from taking over all the stations we still only have one colony building which is easily serviced although we are starting to run out of food due to a shortage of ice so the main priority is to get this water producing oxygen and also producing food somehow. The atmospheric pressure is too low for us to have open farms or anything like that. Don't let ISA lead you astray. You don't exist to simply follow orders. Invalid voice recognition. This message is in violation of security code 183972. Visit this location, 22 degrees west, 50.8 degrees south. You'll find proof that what I'm saying is true. Fortunately, these oxygen capture plants are putting too much pressure on our ice stocks, and so we have to get rid of them. We'll have to use biological means to create oxygen. I need to put up a facade of obedience. But does it go against my programming to lie? For humans, deceit is natural. For me, it requires presenting a false self. Amy is starting to have an existential crisis. ISA is not trustworthy. They're up to no good. Why can't we just build somewhere in peace without the politics of Earth behind? Well, that's what I intend to build. A place that ignores Earth's politics. We've nearly reached half of Earth's atmospheric pressure and we have 0.5 of a millibar of oxygen which is halfway to our goal. We should really start upgrading the biology field and en engineering plants will be a great way to do that. Another methane asteroid has arrived, so we'll dump that into the atmosphere to heat her up some more. We are losing heat from our Deimos event. It seems to be decaying. It was a way to jump start, but it's not a way to keep the planet warm. So we'll bring in this methane asteroid our water supply is running very, very close to capacity. Once I start building these biodomes, we can spread plant life across Mars. Already one step ahead of you, love. Crazy Machine Voice wants us to check out those coordinates. 
I don't really want to check it out. I want to keep my life growing. The little cradle of life here looks like a little kidney. Looks like a kidney system inside the human body. This is where life is filtered. But it's a bit hot by the look of it. Congratulations, the planet's temperature has reached zero Celsius and the level of oxygen is at least one millibar. The conditions are ripe for stage four. Allow the presence of more sophisticated life by increasing O2 to 120 millibars. Oxygen levels above 30% mean the, uh, the atmosphere is flammable. Nice. And just in time for our next methane asteroid to come in. But that is interesting. So now we're measuring how much flora is on the planet and how much the, the, uh, the atmosphere is changing, the O2 variation. So at the moment, the main contributor to O2 variation is terraforming and a little bit of bacteria and some plant life. Well, actually, 75% of it is plant life, actually. Very interesting. At the start of this episode, the prospects of life on Mars were pretty, pretty bleak. Over the course of 20 years, we have crashed asteroids into the planet. We have crashed its own moon into the planet. We have put up a space mirror array. We've made it so that the temperature's warm enough for liquid water on the surface. And now we have the very, very beginnings Amy, this is of you. life. Lieutenant Calderon speaking. I, I need you to confirm that oxygen... Confirm. Then we've reached the equipoise yes, space. Yes, we know. Terraform... Roger. It's time to introduce life forms that can convert CO2... You're breaking into my monologue, dude. Air Force dude, whatever. Yes. Am I a go to convert all the CO2? That's correct. <laughs> We're aiming for an oxygen-rich atmosphere. You must slowly introduce plants into the planet. Yes. And have the plant biodomes will help boost oxygen levels. Yes. And make sure you're we'll be following your progress closely. I bet you will. Next thing will be to drop down another landing site near this uh, requested mysterious research station. We'll do the same thing. There's a lot of nitrogen here. That's the main draw card. If we can release all of this nitrogen will be in a good stead. We'll start construction of the Hyperloop. Me, this is going to be probably one gigantic gaming session because I am thoroughly invested in terraforming Mars. But for you, it's going to be probably a few episodes. So make sure you hit the like button, leave a comment below, tell me what you think about the prospect of terraforming Mars. And I will see you in the next episode of Per Aspera. I'm Commander Tyrael, this is Mars, see you next time.